Welcome back. I will look at um, commodities matters. Nigeria State Oil Company says it has secured a joint venture to cover the more than 700 million cost of developing new oil fields in its southern Niger Delta energy hub. The Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation explains that a tripartite agreement with local energy firms, First Exploration and Petroleum Development Company, as well as international oil services giant Slumberger, will help develop the Anyala and Madu fields under oil mining license OML 83 and 85. The OPEC member state has been seeking investment to increase its crude oil reserves to 40 billion barrels by 2020, up from the current reserves of 37.2 billion barrels. Under the agreement, Slumberger would provide the $700 million investment in developing the fields, which would add 193 million barrels of crude to current reserves. The state oil company said it would also add 800 billion cubic feet of gas to Nigeria's proven gas reserve. And the director in charge of Africa Trade Expansion Program at the World Trade Center in Miami, United States, uh, Kemi Arosoy, has been talking about Africa rethinking its position on the Africa Growth and Opportunities Act due to expire in 2025. Ms. Arosoy, of course, mentioned this at uh, the annual summit uh, going on uh, in Kigali at the African Export Import Bank, um, AGM. Uh, let's bring um, Ms. Arosoy now to expatiate more on the need for African countries to brace up for what lies ahead. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Mr. Rosanya. Thank you for having Now, the AGOA program is due for expiration in 2025, but you foresee a situation where the program could be shut down before that date. Why? Um, thank, thank you so much. Uh, my organization, the World Trade Center Miami, mean, was um, invited the African Bank to participate in the 16 years and in 2015 it was recently um, extended by uh, 10 years which is going to run out and it's going to expire in 2025 but if we look at our performance uh, under the AGOA um, framework over the last 16 years in my opinion I think the opportunity has been underutilized um, looking at the figures quickly uh, for 2016 um, total um, exports from the 38 eligible countries under the AGOA framework, total exports from um, these 38 countries to the U.S. in 2016 under the AGOA framework was $9.4 billion, and 65% of that was essentially um, crude oil. Crude oil is not the main reason why AGOA was established. It was established so that we can industrialize, so that we can build up our local manufacturing. And for a continent that has been talking about um, economic diversification for for so many years. If you look at, if you back out the um, oil oil component of 65% from the 9.4 billion dollars um, worth of exports that was done last year, um, non-oil export was only 3.2 billion. And if you look, if you if you break that down further into um, which countries contributed. Um, to these exports. South Africa alone did 50% of the $3.2 billion. Um, so, I mean, technically what it means is that the, the remaining 37 eligible countries um, only did about $1.6 billion. So what I see as my contribution is we do not have market access barrier. What we have is lack of clear implementation on the AGOA um, framework. We do not have, um, uh, we have insufficient uh, government support for small and medium 
um, size um, businesses that can help us to grow our economy. We all know that small businesses are the engines of the economy. And for example, in the US, 97% of all exporters are small and medium sized um, businesses, and they are highly supported by their government. So um, we have insufficient support from African governments to support small and medium sized companies. We also have lack of visibility in the US market. All right. And we also, and we also have a, um, you know, concern about the quality of products that we have to offer um, into this market. Okay, given that uh, this um, program may be scrapped anytime soon, according to your report, and here in Nigeria, uh, the country is trying to promote non-oil export, what opportunities are there now for the country to tap into, perhaps before this program is scrapped? Um, there's, there's a huge opportunity. Okay, I operate from uh, Miami. The World Trade Center Miami actually promotes two-way trade between the Western Hemisphere and other global markets. And the Western Hemisphere includes, the Western Hemisphere includes um, parts of North America, South America, and the Caribbean. We are able to effectively cover this um, region in my organization because of the strategic location of Miami. Miami is the trade and logistics hub of the, the Americas. This region is, you know, um, generally referred to as the Americans. So now if you look at the opportunities in the Caribbean beef beyond the U.S. market, there, there's huge opportunity for our products. And my organization, the World Trade Center Miami, recently launched a, um, a special, um, a specialized export development program that we, you, we want to, um, we're targeting three sectors the food and beverage sector, the agri sector, because according to the IMF, that's where um, African countries have the most comparative advantage. So we're targeting them, that sector, we're targeting the art and craft, and also fashion, because we know that there's huge opportunity for these products in the U.S. market and beyond the U.S. market, in the Caribbean market, and also South American market. All right. Um, but really, the challenge is for us to, to make sure that our products are visible in this location. I just right, mentioned you. something about South Africa, that South Africa did 50% of the non-oil export. Most thank of the you, trade Mr. Rasaya. Most of the trade shows in America, you, you, you don't find serious participation from African countries. All right, Mr. Rasaya, I'll, I'll just have to let you go now. Our time is really running against us. Well, it's been a wonderful week uh, with you, our viewers. Thank you very much for being part of the program. I'm Chimizi Obi. You're welcome.